Welcome back to Miller's Construction. This is our current remodel project and I wanted to share with you guys some of the air sealing and insulation details that are going into this particular project. It's a massive project. There's a lot of details that we need to make sure we execute properly. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Let me turn you around and show you what we're working on. So as you can probably tell, this is an unconditioned space right now. And we have actually transformed this space from what used to be a conventional attic with manufactured trusses. And yes, we did cut out all of the truss supports. All of this has been engineered uh, by a truss engineer. So the guy that actually designs trusses, he uh, took measurements and came up with a game plan for us so that we could essentially cut out a lot of the webbing and the supports and we followed all of that to the T. You can kind of see over here what we've done, what he's specced for us. These are two by six scabs, and we've got a collar tie up here essentially, but we're not here to talk about cutting out trusses. We're here to talk about air sealing and insulation details in a vaulted or cathedral ceiling. And that's essentially what we've got here. So this space is quite large. It's 20 foot wide by 50 foot long. So it's 50 foot long to this other end right here. And because we've got so many skylights, this is actually a sky window, it opens. We've got two of those in this space, but we have 10 skylights essentially in here. Got the line sets and the drain and the communication wires and all that. Aaron Owens came and installed all of that for us, did a nice neat job, and he has done a manual J on all of this so that the HVAC equipment is sized properly. But I had to share with him our plan on how we're going to insulate this space. And this is what we came up with. Now we would have liked to have used a mineral wool product like rock wool or something of that nature, but I could not find it in this width. Anywhere in the country, I could not find it. So that's a shame. So we've switched to R19 fiberglass rolls. And you can see we've done kind of a crappy job of detailing this. But what we're doing is, before we stick up our one inch rigid foam, we're taking out these support pins and we're straightening things up and making sure everything's perfect. That way it's nice when the board goes up. So we don't want any little gaps like this. You know, little details like that, we're trying to straighten up be right before we put the board on. We have to have the supports right now, otherwise the rolls will fall down. And we didn't want to get the paper faced uh, because we just didn't need it. That was just unnecessary and I think it would have been harder to work with. But this is the detail that we've come up with. So you can see here, I left this little piece out for you so you can see, we do have an attic baffle, as I call it. It's a Dura vent. This will draw cool, fresh air up from the soffits. Bear in mind, we did not blow that insulation in. It's not our job. Um, there, should have, there should be baffles down there at the eaves. There's not, but I can see daylight down through there, so shouldn't be an issue, but there should be. Bear in mind, below us is a garage, unconditioned garage space. So keep that in mind as I walk you through this project. But we've decided to go ahead and vent all the way up to the attic. And you can see we've got a nice ridge vent up here. We don't have the baffles in this one yet. But you can see we've got a nice ridge vent so that that fresh air that it draws from the soffits can run up our nice attic baffles and exhaust out the ridge vent. So we still have ventilation on the bottom side of our decking, but we're also insulated. The next step, because R19 is just not quite enough, uh, and we'd really like to go more, but we can't due to space, is our rigid foam insulation. This is an R5, this is one inch, so that'll bring the R value up some. But what's really gonna carry the load is the fact that this rigid foam is gonna be a thermal break everywhere there's one of our new scabbed on rafters, so that's gonna help. But we're also going to be taping all of the seams and air sealing all of this. So. Should be a really nice conditioned space. Eventually there will be a knee wall that comes up here. We're gonna build the knee wall. 
and we're going to abut this one inch rigid foam into a half inch layer of rigid foam that will go all the way down to our subfloor. So essentially what you're gonna have is you're gonna have one continuous air barrier all the way around this space. And that's really what's gonna help carry the load uh, to cool and heat this space. Talk to you just a little bit about what's underneath this subfloor. We've got blown in cellulose insulation that we blew in. And because I know that cellulose settles over time, I know that there's gonna be a slight air gap underneath this subfloor. So what we did to remedy that was we installed these rigid blocks of one inch XPS foam and they are spray foamed all the way around each particular block. And then we came back after our subfloor is permanently installed. And you can see we ran a bead of spray foam to seal that connection in between the foam and the subfloor. That way any hot humid air from the unconditioned attic space can't flow underneath our subfloor or cold air for that matter and really disrupt our nice envelope. We don't want nasty, hot or cold air going underneath our living space, do we? So that's, that's the point of this right here. Now envision we're gonna build a knee wall and on the back side of that knee wall, just like we've got here, we're gonna have a layer of one inch XPS rigid foam. And you can see here, we've done a decent job of sealing that up. We'll build an entire knee wall, both on this side and on that side. And on the back of it, we'll put more XPS foam. That'll give our insulators something to blow against. We're probably gonna be using damp sprayed cellulose. We'll let that dry out. We'll dehumidify the space. Once that's done, we'll layer that with a half inch of XPS foam. Then we'll be able to continue down with our one inch foam, tie into that. We'll be able to caulk the joint where the half inch XPS foam meets the subfloor. We'll be able to tape the joint that goes across our knee wall. That'll give us one continuous air seal all the way around. So wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully that helps if you are in a situation like this where you're remodeling a space or you've had problems with space. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention. Let's talk about lighting in here for a second because that plays a critical role in the detail that we've we're executing here. Let me, let me spin you around one more time. So if we were to install traditional recessed can housings or fixtures, we've only got five and a half inches approximately. So any recessed housing, even the short ones, you're gonna be smashed right against the decking. It's gonna create a hot or cold spot. We did not want that. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to lav this entire space all the way down with two by fours. That will create an air gap, an inch and a half thick right on top of this. That'll provide for those retrofit recess lights to be installed. So that'll give us a nice air gap. We won't have to worry about um, air sealing or, or hot, humid, moist air coming from these rafter bays into our conditioned space around the recess light. So that's also another detail that uh, is real critical. You don't wanna put a whole lot of recessed lights through your air barrier. So we're just going to come down an inch and a half and put it on top of our air barrier. And we'll run all of our circuits through those lath. It's gonna work out really nice. All right, I think, I think I've covered everything. Really hope this video helped you. Like I said before, if you're in a remodeling project and you're, or you're having issues with your vaulted ceiling, you're having condensation issues or it's a space that's difficult to cool in the summertime or heat in the wintertime, maybe some of this will help you. This is just one way that you can do it. Once again, we would have liked to have had some sort of mineral wool here. We, we could have increased the, the R value, but we have, to, uh, we have to use what we can get, right? So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.